focus on global cancer control, particularly for women, because I see this as an example of really a social injustice. You know, nine in 10 women who die of cervical cancer live in developing countries or low and middle income countries. And although breast cancer remains more common in women in high income countries like Canada, most women who die of this disease live in the poorer countries of the world. One thing I'm particularly excited about is the Lancet series called Health, Equity, and Women's Cancers, which I was invited to lead for the journal. And we've managed to bring together 43 authors from 18 countries, including about 10 low and middle income countries. And of the authors, more than half are women. These include scientists, global health workers, women's rights advocates, cancer advocates, so one woman who has personally experienced cancer, and many other colleagues from around the globe. The purpose of the series is to draw attention to this crisis of breast and cervical cancer or women's cancers in developing countries and to try to bring together a call to action to reduce these disparities globally. I have mixed feelings speaking about my work at the moment because I'm leaving soon for Geneva, Switzerland to take up a new post at the World Health Organization headquarters. Specifically, I'll be a technical officer in the non-communicable disease management unit. And my role will include building programs and policy and guidance for care providers and ministries of health to help tackle the problem of breast and cervical cancer globally. In my new role at the WHO, I'm most excited about working with others who have tremendous experience in women's health, women's rights, and also in the chronic diseases in general. This is a really neglected area in global health, and I think the timing is right and there's momentum building to really make an impact on women's cancers worldwide. Music